Hello students. Um, first of all, apologies for all of the content showing on my screen right now, but I'm going to be walking you through <clears throat> the process for completing one of the sidebar menu areas for your, for your product website. So first of all, you've probably all read through the assignment by now, and I'm going to spend the first few minutes of this video going through the assignment, uh, which is showing here on the screen. And then the second part of the video I'll spend going through my process for how I did this on my own website. So first of all, so here's the assignment. The draft is due um, one week after this assignment was posted. So the draft is due Monday, April 17th um, at 11.59. So that really doesn't give you a ton of time to work on this draft. You should be able to get the infrastructure on your website built pretty quickly. Uh, but the content is going to take you a little bit longer. I recommend that you actually get the infrastructure done first so you can make sure you get those glitches worked out and then turn to actually uh, building out the documentation. So I'll tell you what I mean in a little bit. So your peer reviews this time, you have a little bit longer to get those done. You have until Friday um, of the week that the peer review is due to do the, to do the peer review. So two peer reviews are due. And I want you to take the extra time to do a very thorough job testing and troubleshooting your peers' um, new page of their website. So then the following week after that, there will be elective conferences, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And you can either sign up to see me in person or we can create a, um, a FaceTime or Google Hangouts or Skype appointment to do that. And then your final draft is due on Friday, April 28th. Okay, so I'll read some of this to you and some of it I'll just summarize. So in this assignment, you will return to the website you built at the beginning of the semester. Using your knowledge of best practices of documentation composition, you will choose one element from your sidebar menu to complete. Um, please read every word in this yourself. I just don't want to take all the time in this video to do it. I do want to reiterate that this is a 400 level class. So there's certain basically rudimentary or foundational things that I expect you just to do as a matter of course. And those concern, um, you know, attention to detail on the level of punctuation, spelling, um, paragraph structure, um, design, basic design principles within technical communication. So uh, those are expectations of mine. Okay, so you are required to create one linked page off of your main page. And that linked page, you can think of it as um, one of the things that um, you would promise to create um, for a client as part of a doc plan, like the one that you just completed. So you'd be creating one of those things um, in this assignment. So you will need to assure that there's a working link from your homepage to the designated page, fac.html, for example, um, that you are building. Um, you need to do a little bit of research on how to create those linked pages, but I'm actually going to show you in this video, but you'll probably want to follow up with a little bit of research on your own. You're going to need to be sure that you can navigate back and forth uh, between the home page and your linked page without just hitting the back button and the forward button. You need to have links that work on both pages that correspond to each other. Okay. So now in this assignment, I've got three boxes that designate the three choices that you have. So you can choose a FAC page, you can choose a quick start page, and you can choose a user guide. Um, now, I've included some links for sample. Um, so, for example, here's a sample FAC page. Um, this is for a hair straightening iron, as it turns out. So, this is the FAC page. As you can see, they have a question and a pretty thorough answer that covers several different versions of their product. Um, this would often, in, in some product fact pages, have hyperlinks to other information, and I want you to seriously consider doing that. You might think, oh, well, this fact choice is going to be the easiest because all I have to do is write text, but if you look around, not just in the examples that I gave you, but if you look around at other examples of fact pages, you might see that um, there are some versions that you prefer because they have more content. So take a look at the examples that I gave. Now what I'm going to show you in this video is my sort of mock-up of a quick start guide, sort of. But um, a quick start guide will generally be linked as a PDF. 
you'll have to have a source page and then the PDF. So you have to create both of those things, the link source, source page plus the PDF. Um, similarly, if you created a fact page, you have to have the fact.html, but you have to create all the content on that page yourself. And not only do you have to create the content, but you have to write it elegantly, design it elegantly, include any, um, as I said, additional um, resources provided through the hyperlink, unless it's to some outside page that you didn't design, and, or illustrations that you designed. Um, so, for example, um, here is the source page for the for Nikon cameras, and this is the what what I'm calling the source page, where you would go to get the Quick Start Guide. For example, here's the Quick Start Guide, and then you just click here to download as a, as a PDF, and you'll see once it downloads. And opens. This is a really long document. Of course, yours wouldn't need to be this long. This is 40 pages long, but you would need to do some brief iteration of a quick start guide like this as a PDF. And you see this includes um, design of text, it includes some iconography, um, and once you get further into it, it concerns, um, it includes illustrations, which we uh, spent part of this class. Um, discussing and examining. So um, numerical lists, troubleshooting guides, um, these are all the sorts of things that you would want to include in the actual PDF that you created. Okay, so then a user manual is your third option, a user guide. Now compared to the previous two examples you might think, oh my goodness, well a user guide is longer than either of those two things. That is true. For example, this one that I include for you here is 277 pages long, but you could do, you certainly don't have to do that, um, but you could create a much more abbreviated version. Um, or look at this one. I'm not going to show it to you in this video, but this is a pretty rudimentary user guide. But it's still, if you were to create something like this, exhibits a lot of the skills that I'm hoping that you would be able to demonstrate to me after learning about documentation and learning about um, allowing it to be live online. Okay, so here's some final remarks about the assignment. Um, in this assignment, you'll be evaluated not only on the completeness of your page and subpage or pages um, associated downloadable documents, but also on the ambition of what you've tried. And because of that, I'm also requiring you to do a screen recording. This time, the screen recording is worth a smaller percentage than it was in the original version of this assignment early in the semester. This time 75 points is dedicated to the screen recording and 125 points to the actual website components in the documentation itself. Okay, so please read all the um, language in this assignment so that you understand what I'm expecting you to do. Now let's look at what I've done here. Uh, let's go to my busy product. You might be familiar with this from um, the original videos this semester. I kind of dreamed up this product that's sort of like a Roomba, but can clean everything in your house. And I called it the busy product. Um, I didn't finish uh, all of the content on this page just because I'm sort of mocking it up for you guys. But if this was your home page, you would want to make sure that all of the content that you included on the page was content relevant to your product. So some of you did this in your original version. You changed these to have additional information and um, some contact information that corresponded to your own product. You don't have to provide real contact information, but you make something up to put there. Okay, so I created a user guide. So if you click here, um, oh, I don't know why it's, oh, I'm sorry. I created a quick start guide, not a user guide. That's why that one wasn't working. So quick start, here you'll see I have quickstart.html. And I, because I was doing this quickly for you, I just created a silly little illustration of my busy product cleaning a bathtub and shower. So using your busy product model 1.0 to clean horizontal hard surfaces, um, using it to clean draperies, using it to clean sinks, toilets, and bathtubs, showers. Actually, so this image should actually be done here with the bathtubs and the showers. And I should have had one here that showed this little cute busy product cleaning floors. But forgive me for that. Um, I did at least include an image here, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. Okay, so what did I do in order to link this page back to my home page and my home page back to my quick start? 
Well, if you go, see, you'll see I have my FileZilla and my brackets up here. Then I'm connected with the FileZilla. And you'll see if, you know, you double click on your public.html folder, and that's where you originally had your index. You'll see I have a new file here called quickstart.html in the same place. So what I did to create that was I went back to the HTML5 up um, package and I used the index again in my brackets. I created a new file up here. I said new and I created a new file and then I just pasted that content in again and then I saved it as quickstart.html so that I didn't have two files called index.html. I had a quickstart.html and an index.html. At this point, they're both autonomous. They're not linked to each other. So once you get to your quickstart.html page, you have to go back through. And um, actually, I think what I did was, so this is the home page. I just used one of these subpages is what I picked for my code. So if you look at the page source, I used, um, here it's coming up down here in a window. I just copied this code. I selected it all and then I copied it all and I pasted it into a new page in brackets and I called that quickstart.html. Anyway, so if you look at that, you'll see that just like you did with the first one, you go through and you change the content that's on their page that you don't want to the content on your page that you do want. So I deleted some like generic editorial by HTML5 up. I deleted the menus that I didn't want. I changed this image here. I changed this text. I changed this text and I changed this text. And then I got rid of some of this stuff down at the bottom. So once I did that in my brackets, um, you'll see actually that here's how to clean hard surfaces and I have this little text paragraph let's get started putting your busy product to work many people are excited to use their busy product for all of their hard surface cleaning from wood floors to tile to laminate um, and then I have my little image here of my tub illustration I'll show you how I included that in a minute but what you need to include here let's go down to the menus Here's the menu block of text. So here's index.html. That's called home page. User guide here is generic.html. And then quick start, what I called quick start, is what I had changed in the sidebar menu to say quick start. You have to make sure that you, oops, you have to make sure that you create this, call, this page called quickstart.html. So once you've saved it in your brackets, what I did was I saved it here, but then I also saved as and saved a copy to my desktop. Then you see quickstart.html in my desktop. And I've got my FileZilla here. And then I dragged it from my desktop on top of public.html. And then it showed up right here in my um, under my home directory. So if you have problems like it's saying forbidden or you know it, it isn't pulling up when you go to in my case um, unm.edu forward slash tilde newmark um, forward slash quickstart.html um, if you got a forbidden page you need to go to file attributes and make sure that you have all of this selected, all of this selected, and the numeric value is 755. That's the same convention you need to use to make sure that your images are showing up. Okay, so you've done that. You've made sure that you can click from your new page, this is the new page, back to your home page. But in order to click from your home page, to your new page, Quick Start, you have to go back to your original index page that you created and you have to make sure that you change that sidebar menu item to Quick Start. And then you have to save that and you have to make sure that you overwrite. Again, I saved within brackets and then I saved as on my desktop index. And then you drag it back over to your home directory and it says, do you want to overwrite the file? And you say yes. That way you'll have navigability back and forth between 
your new page, and your home page. That's all I need you to concern yourself with is going back and forth between those two pages. Okay, because I don't want this video to be um, super, super long, I'm going to try to finish up by showing you two more things I did. So here's the template. Um, <clears throat> in the template, if you look and you see that right under where it says generic, you have this image. Let's see if I can find that. Here it says generic, right here. And below that, you it says images. I've got this. I'm hoping you can see it in this video. It says images forward slash pick 11.jpg. Now, I tried to just, when I saved my image, I ended up calling it, um, ended up calling it tub.jpg. But I had originally just renamed it pick 11 because I was like, if this is pick 11, and I just replace it with my own pick 11 and I set the permissions properly, it should work. So I saved it and I dragged it over into image, uh, well I dragged it into images actually, um, and that uh, pick 11 I overwrote it, it didn't work. So what I ended up doing was creating a new name, tub, um, dragging it into here, making sure that all my image permissions under file attributes were set to read and execute at 755. Once I did that, and I had changed within the code on the quick start, um, let me see if I can find that here, tub.jpg, so images forward slash tub.jpg. Once I did that, and then I saved this, saved as onto my desktop, and dragged back over into public HTML and overwrote the file, then it showed up. So that was success for me. I know you guys and the last version of this assignment had some trouble <coughs> with the images, but that's how I got it to work. Now the last thing that I want to show you is that I say here in my paragraph, let's get started putting your busy product to work, blah, blah, blah. Access the hard service quick start guide here. This is my PDF. Now some of the ones that I showed you from like Nikon, for example, they have nice little buttons you could learn online and that's something you need to show me in your video, the research you, you did to solve problems or create new resources that are more user friendly. You might look into how you create a button. I didn't do that. I just created a link. Um, and I honestly couldn't remember. I hadn't done this in a long time. So I looked up information on Adobe, you know, how to open a PDF file to a specific page. And it's got this ahref equals tag. Now, I thought that wasn't quite right, so I went back to my old website here, which is really ugly. This is just my website, and I knew in the past I had included a link to a PDF, so I just viewed my page source. I said, how did I do that? So, and I said, oh, click here for a PDF. And I had this href also. Now, it didn't have juliannewmark.com forward slash. It didn't have any of that, like this Adobe example shows. It didn't have a website address and then a forward slash. It just had, where did that go? It just had the name of the PDF. So I used that convention in brackets. So I had a PDF that I wanted. I just have, I used your assignment, which was a PDF. And in the public HTML, I dragged it over. Here it is, English 414 um, completion PDF. You can see that it's a file type PDF. I dragged it over so that it's in the same place. You have to drag it into the public HTML folder right on top of this. You drag your PDF in there if you want a PDF. And then I used the A space href equals quote name of the file end quote close link. And then you have a little A close A there on the other side of what you want highlighted. So I saved that, saved as to my desktop, and then I dragged that whole newly revised quick start page over here onto public HTML <coughs> and elected that I wanted to overwrite it. <clears throat> and then when I visited my page the first time, it I clicked on this and it didn't, it took me to a forbidden page. Anytime that happens, you know that you need to do your file permissions. So here I am on that PDF. I right click, I go to file permissions. Once I changed it to read execute 755, <clears throat> once I did that, 
I refreshed the page and then I was able to just click and get to a PDF. Now, I, as I said, I'm just showing the assignment here. You guys would have a PDF here that would actually be your quick start guide or your user guide. Um, it would have images. It would have a nice document design. It would have all the things that, uh, you know, if you look at this Nikon one and you open up their, uh, let's see here, yeah, their guide, you know, it would follow some of these conventions, but obviously it would be much more rudimentary. So this is mine, my PDF. Um, if you do a FAC page, however, you're not going to have to do this. You're not going to create a separate PDF because you're just going to have all of the content here on the page. Um, doing the um, quick start or the manual will show me more of your expertise in creating this kind of documentation and displaying it in an online environment than just doing a FAC page. But if you do some research onto really useful and um, media rich FAC pages, they're generally pretty streamlined, but there might be some conventions that you want to include in yours um, to show me that you have achieved proficiency in some of these documentation design strategies, then that will be fine too. I'm going to sign off in this video because it's already long enough, but I hope I've given you some answers to questions you might have. Um, and I uh, hope I've shown you a baseline for what I expect in this assignment. And let me know if you have any questions.